So options are financial derivatives, which means an option is a contract that gives the buyer the right, but not the obligation to buy or sell an asset on a specific date for a specific price. Options have some better reputation because people use it for speculation and people use it for hedging. Okay? They're bad because you, people use it for speculation because options give you opportunity to create huge leverage. So what a leverage, it means you invest relatively little money, but you can earn lots of money on that, okay, on this investment. But on the other hand, you can also lose lots of money. Okay? And people like the first, people did like the second. But how do we, what do we do with the options? We don't use in our research options as an investment tool. Right? So we don't try to create portfolios to invest into these instruments. It's also an interesting topic, but we're doing some, something different. So what do we do? We try to extract information from options. So what does it mean? All the prices on the financial markets, they can reveal information to you. So what information? It's basically sentiment and it's knowledge of all the market participants who are trading these options, okay, who are trading the stocks. Okay, so if you think about the stock of a company, what does it give you? It's basically if you buy the stock, then you're entitled to all the future dividend stream that the company go and deliver. So the price of the stock also reflects some feelings about the future or some sentiment about the future. So what is the difference with options? Stock would reflect the anticipation of the market participants about all the future history of this company which might be 10 years, might be 100 years, might be 1,000 years. We don't know, right? Because in accounting and finance, we assume that companies exist forever. Options, on the other hand, they have some fixed maturity. So it means that the option, if you buy it, it will expire in 30 days or in 60 days or in 90 days. So typically, liquid option markets exist up to one year. Okay? It means that the option price reflects information that people have about the market for the next pretty short time period. Okay, and that's what we try to extract from the option prices. So <clears throat> let's start with uh, maybe with the usual term volatility. And uh, volatility describes the fluctuation of the price around the mean or around the trend. So you have a long trend usually and you have the volatility which, which fluctuates around it. And implied volatility describes the volatility which the market participates for the future, so for the within the maturity, so for the next 30 days, 90 days, one year. So it's based, it's a forward-looking uh, volatility and it's not, obviously it's not the same as the historical one which is calculated out of historical information, so it's historical stock prices. Okay. Volatility in general is a very bad word. I had a good friend working for an energy company in Oklahoma and he was writing lots of reports to his bosses and his uh, seniors one, once told him that he shouldn't use the word volatility because nobody understands what it is. As Lorenzo said, is correct. Volatility describes you how volatile or how much the stock is moving around, around its mean. Okay? And it should be contrasted to historical volatility. So why it should be contrasted with historical volatility? Because historical describes you what happened and implied volatility, which you can infer from the option price, describes to you what people think going to happen in the future. Right? So you all probably heard about VIX, which is a volatility index, which also is called the fear index. So if VIX is high, it means that implied volatility on the market is high, and it means that people are have fear about the future. Okay, they think that the stock's going to be going up and down all the time, and they certainly want to hedge against this environment. In terms of correlations, correlations are even worse than volatilities, okay? Just because they are much harder to work with and they're harder to estimate from, from the data. So what are correlations? Correlations are measures of how stocks move together, okay? So for example, there might be high volatility environment where stocks go up and down a lot and correlation will tell us how much they go up and down together. Okay? So why is correlation important? Because if correlation is low and you buy a portfolio of stocks, then there is a called diversification effect, which means that if one stock goes up and the other stock goes down, or they basically move independently from each other, then the portfolio volatility would be lower. 
right, and the volatility of individual components. If correlation is equal to one, for example, so if all the stocks are perfectly correlated, then there is no diversification, and portfolio volatility is really high. Okay, so that is the point. So we try to extract the correlations from option prices. Okay, so one can extract the implied volatility from the option price, and we try to extract the correlations. So why is it complicated? Why is it more difficult? Just because if you want to extract the implied volatility from the option, you need to observe options on one particular underlying. Okay, so for example, if you want to extract volatility from S&P 500 index, you just take options on S&P 500, and you can invert the so-called Black-Schulz formula, right, to get the implied volatility. For the correlations, you have somehow to compare the option on a number of securities and options on each of the securities simul uh, written individually. Okay, and when they compare this two, you can assume something specific about the form of this correlation and you can extract it from the option prices. But it becomes pretty technical, so I wouldn't go too much into it. Yeah, so with the um, implied correlation or the correlation, yeah, implied correlation, you can predict risks better. As he said, you have the diversification effect. And here again, you have a, you have a measure which is forward looking, so it incorporates the market the market feelings, what what the participants think, so therefore it's a better measure to to use, and you can predict risks, for example, better, especially in if the market moves in one direction, like the all assets together move in one direction, for example, in crisis. These option prices they reflect feelings, but not only feelings; they also reflect knowledge. All right, because all the people come to market with different knowledge, and then all of this is aggregated in one price. And we try to extract this average knowledge, which might also be on average wrong, or might be correct, but at least it gives us some information about what people expect from the future. So which information is most important, it depends on your application, right? It depends what you want to do. So for example, in one of the papers, we've been extracting implied correlations to construct the option implied betas. So what is a beta? It's the exposure of an asset relative to some factor. So for example, relative to the market. Okay, and we have shown that this option implied betas typically work better than historical betas. Or we also tried using option implied correlations and volatilities in portfolio optimization. Right, so if you can predict the future volatility better, you certainly can make much better portfolio decisions. What you cannot do, or what you hardly can do using options, you cannot predict the direction in which market is going to be going. Okay? Because if it were possible, then we all would not be sitting here, but we'd be making money outside. What you can do, you can, for example, make a statement about which stocks, if you take number of stocks, would outperform the others okay, in the next months. You don't know if all the stocks are going to go up or down, but you say, for example, you can say that if all stocks go up, then some of them would go higher than the others. Okay, and certainly it's also very useful when you make your portfolio decisions because you can always create these long short portfolios and include it in your in your strategy. So one main part of our research was to construct a fully option implied covariance matrix. So far everything was historical or historical and adjusted with option implied data, so a mix. But in our newest project, we were able to construct a fully option implied matrix. And yeah, with this matrix, you can do a lot of stuff afterwards, which is maybe also too complicated now. And yeah, that's one, one part. Yeah, that's one of the things which we try to work on. I guess it's pretty, really promising. So we have some preliminary results. We got into a couple of good conferences and we're getting good comments. We'll keep you posted.